اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته how is everybody all good pretty sunny out here in uk it's almost touching 31 degrees today so it is quite unusual in uk oh you enjoying it it's a pretty barbecue weather do some barbecue have some nice cricket or football game the same the football world cup is going on you know <laughs> yesterday we had a great match belgium beat brazil football world cup 2018 that was nice good so it's 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 good how is everybody doing walaikum assalam imran how are you everything okay so um good to have you in the class i hope you got time all of you to just recover from what we did last time a lot of exercises a lot of stuff we did last time uh, many things came together uh we will inshallah do some practice today before we move on i want to make sure that that we don't we don't lose out on it so um it's important so we'll do practice we'll make sure that you understand what we have done last time a quick summary as always inshallah and then we'll move on um walaikum assalam uh, usman uh, how are you as well good to know imran alhamdulillah everything is fine very good excellent uh, good to have you folks um it's very good to have you folks uh, i really like the commitment you show and i really like the you know especially when you do things online um there's no one to push you so there's no one there's no pressure you don't pay for the course you don't you don't um you don't, don't go to the class there's no peer pressure it's purely purely your own intention and inshallah allah will bless you for that it's purely purely your intention and near and inshallah allah will bless you for that so jazakallah for coming i really really appreciate that um so may allah bless you for all of this inshallah um okay good um so um i want to do a quick review of what we did we'll construct very quickly the pronoun chart uh, I hope you've got hold of it. Uh, if not, we just quickly construct it, and we just go back and revise the revise the concepts we did, um, uh, inshallah, uh, in the pronoun chart, um, and then we go forward and do some practice. The exercises that I ask uh, you all to do, so I'll do them uh, not completely. I'll do uh, parts of it in the exercise in the class because I really, really want you to do it. Give it a shot, really. uh if you haven't been able to complete it you still have time there's no worries about it uh and then we'll move on to another topic which is pretty easy topic probably touching another fragment time permitting inshallah um so this is a major one so idafa and pronouns this is one of the major ones uh, so you've covered it mashallah there's another thing i wanted to discuss with you so originally this course was designed to be closed on 29th of july um and now there's no intention as such um to close the course on 29th of or 9th of July from my side because the objective is to learn the language of the Quran not to close the course so i'm completely fine just to remove the end date of the course and then keep on going keep on going and keep the learning forward in charla okay just keep, keep on running the course until we reach the stage where we think yes we're comfortable to close the course okay um at least to the point where this level 2 starts um so we already have full level 2 lecture recordings available so once you have done this uh this course you can start with the lecture 2 um as well um so uh, if you're fine with it so we won't close the course on 29th of July um and we continue the course until we cover the topics that we wanted to cover because i really don't want to rush because we have a deadline coming I really want us to learn the right thing, the concepts correctly, instead of just rushing the concepts because the course deadline is coming. So let's not, in my opinion, let's not target the course deadline. Let's target the quality of education and and the study we're getting here. Um, so if you all agree with that. So anyway, I will continue to these lectures even after 29. If you haven't finished it, even if no one joins, I'll continue to do it because I want to make these recordings available to everyone. Um, so, but I would. really think uh, that we sh- we should continue the course like that uh, and keep on learning become kind of a learning community together inshallah um so uh, instead of just targeting dates and 
trying to close things. Um, and please do let me know if you do need a break because it's August time. You do, you may have holiday plans, but you can always come back to recordings and catch up. But um, but that's what's going on in my mind. So you may be thinking that um, we close 29th of July and we are still studying. Yes, the class pace is slow because we have done a lot of detailed stuff, uh, deep dive stuff, and we've spent, spent a lot of time in learning things because we wanted to learn them right. Um, so the close content that we shared with, with you in the beginning is not going to be covered by 29th of July. So what I'm proposing is let's not target 29th of July and let's keep on going until we cover that content. Okay. So, uh, inshallah. Good. So I will share my screen now uh, and we'll study um, as usual. Um, I will see what you see, hopefully very soon, inshallah. Okay. Good, excellent. Excellent, excellent, very good. Good to know. So um, you should be able to see my screen, guys, um, now. Uh, what I will do is I'll do a very quick review of what we did, and inshallah, we take it from there. Okay. Excellent. So what have we learned? Have we learned so far? Okay. What have we learned? Not so far last time. Okay. Um, so what we did, we were doing idafa. If you remember, we were doing idafa, and we said in idafa, we said idafa can be constructed in three ways. Idafa can be constructed in three ways. That's that's what we say. The first way was the first way was. Um, Idafa with normal isms. Okay? Idafa is only constructed with isms. It's 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 not constructed with fail and it's not constructed with the uh, with harf as well. It's only constructed with ism. Okay. So one of the ways is to construct an idafa with a normalism. Normalism that has a usual four properties. It could be flexible and flexible, all of those things. It could be light or heavy and all of that stuff. Okay. It could also be constructed with special modafs. Special modafs. And the difference was, and the difference was, constructing with normalisms would give you off meaning. Off meaning, right? When he struck the third way was uh, to with pronouns with pronouns. Okay. Third way to construct an dafa was with pronouns. Okay. Now with pronouns, this is where we took the break. We said, okay, let's stop the idafa thing and jump into the pronouns. So we jumped into the pronouns. So the learning pronouns. That's what we did. Okay. We started the study of pronouns. And we said pronouns are just like normalism. They are normalisms. They are normalisms. Um, but not fully normal, effectively. I mean they are isms, let me call it that way. They are isms. They're isms. Okay. So they will have four properties. So they will have all the four properties. It is numbered genotype. Okay. Then they are isms and they will have all the four properties. Okay. Any pronoun. And then we did few things. We, we said about few properties. The property, for example, a type. The type of a pronoun. And we said the type of a pronoun is always proper. Okay. That's what we said. This property is something we know out of the box. We just know it out of the box. Okay? The type of a pronoun is always proper. Okay? Okay? This, this was easy. Then, 
then when we when we went to find the status of a pronoun, we said status. What about the status? The status of a pronoun cannot be told by ending sound or ending combination. We said that, okay? The status cannot be identified by ending sound or ending combination. Okay? It cannot be identified by ending sound or ending combination. So the pronoun, while it's an ism, it will not map to a Muslim chart, okay? It will not map to your Muslim charts. Uh, so its status has to be identified differently. How is the status identified of a pronoun? We said, look at the status of a pronoun. We need to categorize them in two ways, okay? There are, there are independent pronouns, independent pronouns, and there are, the, there are attached pronouns, attached pronouns, okay? Independent and attached. Now, independent pronouns, we said, they are always rafa. They are always rafa. Independent pronouns are always rafa. Why are they called independent? They are called independent because they don't need any other any other ism to survive. They can live on its own. Yes? They can live on its own. They usually come first. They usually come before other isms. Okay? They don't need an ism to exist. Okay? Uh, so that's why they're called independent pronouns. And these pronouns are always rafa. The attached pronouns, however, require some other ism or a fail or a harf to exist. They cannot exist without them. Okay? They cannot independently exist. They usually come after some word, after a fail, after a harf, after an ism. Okay? So the attached pronoun, they can be. They are either nasab or jar. Okay? They're either nasab or jar. And because of all that, we needed to find a way to identify what is an attached pronoun and what is an independent and an, an independent pronoun. Right? That's why we did that entire chart, because it gave us the attached pronoun and the independent pronouns. Okay? So that was the study of status effectively. Then we came to gender, okay? We studied the gen gender. The gender, the gender of a pronoun can be masculine or feminine, just like any other ism, could be masculine or feminine. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it, okay? The number of a pronoun can be singular, pair, or plural. Okay? Singular, pair, or plural, just like any other ism. Okay? There's nothing special about it. The only thing, the easiest property is the type. Let me make them red so you know. The easiest property is the type. And the most detailed study we had to do was effectively for the status. Yes? Because we had to do the independent ones and the attached ones, okay? And while doing the independent and attached ones, we did the chart, and that chart helped us to find the gender and the number and everything, okay? That's what we did in the pronoun study. Once we did that study, we went back to the idafa and said, okay, idafa with pronouns. When we do idafa with pronouns, Idafa with pronouns is always made with attached pronouns, okay? It's always made with an attached pronoun, okay? It's always with an attached pronoun. Okay? It's never with an independent pronoun. It's never with an independent pronoun. And we said, <clears throat> and we said a pronoun when attached to an ism, a pronoun when attached to an ism is always, it's always jar. Okay? Pronoun when attached to an ism is always jar. It's always jar. Okay? So we did some examples as well. Uh, for example, 
for example, um, Omihi. Omihi, his nation. Okay? Omihi, his nation. Okay? So this he is an attached pronoun. This he is an attached pronoun. And it's ja. Okay? Because it's an idafa fragment. Omi is, a, is, a, is an ism which is light. Omi is an ism which is light. It has no al. Omi is an ism which is light. And it has no al. And it is followed by ja. Okay? If it is followed by ja. Okay? So a pronoun attached to an ism will always be ja. Okay? So that's, that's where we stand today. And then we did some exercises, uh, which we will go through today as well. Okay? And uh, before I move forward, and what, what, what I'll do now is I'll construct the pronoun chart with you uh, quickly, and then um, we take it from there, inshallah. Anything so far that is not clear, please give me a shout. Okay? Uh, just, just write your question, and inshallah, I'll try to answer it. Good. Um, so let's go to the pronoun chart. So I want to construct this pronoun chart. Let's do it quickly. Um, so I'm going to just construct it um, very quickly. Singular masculine, third person, starting starting here. It was who uh, uh, was who uh, um, uh, um. I'm only constructing the independent pronoun right now. Okay, who uh, whom are who? Now moving on to the second person. Second person. Anta, antuma, antuma, antum, anta, antuma, antum, anti. Antuma Antuma Antunna Antunna And then the first person Anna Nahnu Nahnu Anna Nahnu First person Anna Nahnu Let's do the meanings quickly Let's do the meanings. Hua is he. Homa is they both or both of them. Hom is they. They masculine. Okay. They both of they both masculine. Okay. And then here is she. Okay. So let me let me write she or it here. Okay, so in both cases, hua and here, they both sometimes are translated to it as well because it depends upon what they are pointing to. Okay, if it is a if it is a thing, it would be it. Okay, if it's normally a living thing, then it will be he or she, or sometimes animal. It, it's going to be it. So I just just let me write he, it, or she, it here. Okay, but primarily it's the he and she. Okay, now huma is also they both, but this time feminine. And Hunna is, is they, but feminine. Okay? I'm oh, sorry, feminine. Ooh. Feminine. Okay? <clears throat> and we have Anta, second person. It's you, masculine. Antuma is you both, masculine. Antum is you all, masculine. In English, you would just call it you all. You, you, you just call it you, right? You don't say you, you, uh, for, you don't differentiate between the you singular and you masculine. If five people are standing in front of me, I'm going to call them you, okay? You guys uh, did not do this for me, for example, okay? I'm not going to say you all did not do this for me. That's once in a while, but normally you just call it you, okay? Um, Anthi is, again, you, but feminine this time. Antuma is you both, or feminine this time, and Antunna is you all. I'm just saying you all, so it's clear, okay? 
feminine this time. Okay. Anna, Anna, first person was I, and Nahnu was we. Okay. Nahnu was we. Anna was I, and Nahnu was we. I did send you a song. You may have heard it. It it, it helps you memorize the chart. Really, it really helps you. Okay. Now. Now, what we're going to do here is below, I'm going to write the Nasab or Jar version of these pronouns, okay? Nasab or Jar, which are the attached forms. Now, what we have written so far is independent. And the status is always Rafa of these pronouns. Okay, the type is always proper of these pronouns. Genders, we can find depending upon where they live in the table. Uh, number, we can find also depending upon where they live in the table, okay? So... Who are attached version could be who or he, who or he, okay. who or he. Oops, not who, who, who or he. Okay. Who or he is the attached form of whoa. In case of huma, it was huma or hema, huma or hema, okay. huma or hema. In case of home, it was home or him. Home or him. Okay. Here, attached from was ha. Uma, attached from was just like above. Uma and hima. Okay. Uma and hima. What am I doing? Okay. Hima. Okay, Hunna was Hunna or Hinna. Hunna or Hinna. So the attached form here, in case of in case of few pronouns, looks the same as independent one, right? So the question might be popping up: How do I know if it is independent or it is, it is attached? There's a tip to it. Number one, the easier answer is context is going to tell you. Okay, context is going to tell you. Number two, I told you that independent pronouns always comes before, okay? Attached pronouns are usually coming after ism that they're relating to, okay? Attached pronouns are coming after the ism that they're relating to. Independent ones usually come before. Not usually, they, use, they always come before, okay? So that will tell you which hunna is it or which home is it or which homa is it, okay? Now, on the second person, I gave you a trick. I said, just replace the Hamza, Noon, and Ta with a Kaf, with a Kaf, and put a Haraka that is on the Ta. And put a Haraka that is on the Ta. So, Anta became Ka. Antuma became Kuma. Okay? And Antum became Kum. Okay? Same story here. Anti became Ki. Antuma became became Kuma, and Antunna became Kunna. Kunna, okay? That was easy, okay? That was just trip. You don't even have to memorize it. If you know independent pronouns, you can just deduce them, right? Then Anna, in case of Anna, we had two forms. We had Ya, or we have Ni, okay? Ya or Ni. Okay, they both are attached forms of Anna. The difference is usually, Ya, ya is usually a Jar form, and Ni is usually a Nasab form. We'll, we'll learn about this, inshallah, okay? more. But, but so you know. And Nahanu's attached form is Na. Nahanu's attached form is Na. All right. I hope we're good with this. So uh, please give me one if you feel you're good with this, you're fine with it, okay? Can I move forward? Give me one if you feel okay with this. If there's any question, any confusion, um, please tell me, okay? Are you comfortable with pronoun chart? Good, excellent. Thank you, Usman, Imran, very good. Let's move forward quickly now. So uh, what we'll do now is we'll jump into the exercise and we'll just do the exercise together a little bit. I just want to make sure that you have all the opportunity to uh, to to check if what what you've done is okay. 
so let me move on to the exercise. Not here, here. Okay. Uh, so you, this is your page number, page number twenty in your notes. Page number twenty in your notes. This was an easier exercise. Okay. What you had to do was four properties of the pronouns. Four properties of the pronouns. This is pretty, pretty simple. First, you, you just need to find if it is an attached pronoun or is it an independent pronoun. Okay. If it's an attached pronoun, you just do the four properties. Okay. So, for example, in case of eleven, in case of eleven, what we do, we say, okay, nahnu. It's gonna be rafa because in an, it's an independent pronoun, and the status is this number is gonna be. Uh, it, it's plural usually. It's plural. Okay. Plural. It could also be dual because two people can also uh, use nahnu. We. Okay. We. Two people who could also be using nahnu. So it could apply to plural or dual, both. Okay. And then you have the gender. Gender, again, it could be masculine or it could be feminine. And then type is always proper. Okay. The type is always proper. Okay. Then let's say take a few here. Let me take another one. Let me take this one, number six. I'm here, number six. Number six, what do you think would be the four properties of number six? Uh, give me a shot, give me a shot. Is it an attached pronoun or, or an independent pronoun? Do you see a pronoun here? Do you see a pronoun in the first place? Let me draw a line. So this is a pronoun, this is a pronoun, okay? On the left-hand side, it's a pronoun, attached pronoun, whom? It's an attached version of the pronoun whom, third person, okay? Okay. Correct. It's an attached form of whom, exactly. So the status of uh, either nasab or jar, could be nasab or jar, close this auto, that ones. could be nasab or jar. Number is definitely plural, okay? Gender is definitely masculine, and type is always proper. Okay, how do I know it is nasab or jar? I would know. I would know. Um, so, Imran, why do you think it's masculine or feminine both? Okay, jar as attached. Okay, um, I see your point, but um, let, I need to tell you a few things before we conclude it's jar, okay? Oh, it's a typo. Good. Yeah, it's only masculine. Now, right now what you know is what is whom. You know this part. You know this part, okay? You know the green part, okay? What you do not know right now is what is on the right side. What you do not know is the yellow part. You don't know this right now, okay? Right now you don't know what is this, but you're assuming it's an ism. If you assume it's an ism, yes, and you should assume that, okay? If it's an ism, yes, then definitely whom is gonna be jar, okay? If it's, if, it, if it's an ism, it's the whom is gonna be jar. I don't wanna conclude here that it's jar because I know what Bianna is. Bianna is not an ism. And you learn this inshallah in few classes. Okay? It's not an ism. Okay? It's a harf. It's a harf. It's a harf that makes any ism nasib. It's a harf that makes any ism nasib. So in this particular case, this whom would be nasab. If you really want to give want me to give you the correct answer, it's gonna be nasab. But I also don't want to confuse you too much. What the, the way you have thought about this is absolutely correct because it's an attached and assuming the right hand side is an ism, it is going to be jar. Absolutely correct thinking. Okay, so that's why I wrote up up, up here that it's going to be either nasab or jar. Context is going to tell me, but in reality, it is nasab. It is nasab in reality, and you will know why in few, next few classes, inshallah. Okay, don't worry about it. But your thinking is correct. As far as your thinking and thought process is correct, you're good, inshallah. Okay? So very good, very good. 
Okay, let me take another one. Let me take this one. Innani. 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 So it is an attached version, definitely. It would be, do you see a pronoun here? Do you see a pronoun here, first question? Do you see which pronoun in here? Correct. It's an attached form of ana, ni. Yes? That pronoun comes in two ways. It's an attached form of ana, I, the first person. Okay, this one. Now, um, it could be nasab or jar, depending upon what is on the right-hand side. If the right-hand side is ism, it is jar. If the right-hand side is not an ism, it could be something else. We, we, we will find out. Okay? But we are finding uh, the pronoun here, and it is nasabodja. It is singular. It is can be masculine or feminine because ana or me could be used with anything, masculine or feminine, right? And type is always proper. Okay, type is always proper. What about number 20? Rabbiki. Rabbiki. Do you see a pronoun here? Which, which pronoun do we have here? You see it. Rabbiki. Yes, it's attached key. Correct. It's attached key. Key and key is an attached version of which pronoun? Which pronoun has key as an attached version? Anti. Anti. Correct. Anti. Very good. Yes. He is attached to second person you. Yes, Usman, correct. Correct him wrong. It's anti. Okay. Now we're looking at two words here. Rabbi and or Rabbi is an ism. Okay. Rabbi means my master. Oh, Rabbi means master. Sorry, not my master. Master. Okay. And ki is a second person pronoun. We know that. Okay. So we do the properties. We do the properties of this pronoun. We say, okay, it's going to be, status is going to be jar, because I know rabbi is an ism, because I know rabbi is an ism, for sure. Okay? Singular, because it's a singular second person pronoun. Gender is going to be feminine, because it's anti's form. It's an anti's attached version. Okay? You, feminine. You feminine, not anta, right? And then it's going to be proper because pronouns are always proper. Because the pronouns are always proper. Okay? Let me take it to the next level a little bit. So now I know rabbi is an ism, meaning master. It means master, okay? Master or lord, whatever you want to translate it, okay? Master is usually the most accurate translation, okay? Um, so, master. Now, master is light. Rabbi is light. Okay? And it has noel. It is light and it has noel. Okay? Both of these apply here. It is light. Noel. So, if it is light and noel, can I say Rabbi is a mudaf? Potential mudaf. It's a potential mudaf. And it is be going to be confirmed mudaf if it is followed by what? Ja. If it is followed by ja. Now I find a pronoun which is attached to it, which is actually ja. So this pronoun becomes what? Mudaf ile. Right? Where should Right. This pronoun becomes mudaf ile. Okay? Mudaf ile. Okay? So this is in fact an idafa fragment. Yeah, it's an infa, it's an idafa fragment. You see that, right? Do you see that? You understand this? 
this this is where you construct uh, idafa with pronouns okay. so um any specifics any specific one on this exercise that you want to discuss because i want to jump into the bigger one the bigger exercise that we have if there's any specific one please do tell me and i'll come back here and discuss it with you okay so let me jump to page number Let's go to page number 23. Page number 23, where you have this long exercise, okay? Page number 23. Any specific that challenged you, please tell me, okay? What we are doing here now is what, what we are finding if something is any dafa or not. If something is any dafa or not. This is what we are trying to find here, okay? So let me let me see which one we can take. <clears throat> forty six. What do you think forty six is? Do you think forty six is any dafa or not? Is it any dafa or not? <clears throat> what do you think? Forty six. Is it any dafa or not? La tumari. La tumari. Is it any dafa or not? The fundamental of requirement of idafa is that it must have two isms, right? One should be mudaf and the other one should be mudaf ilay. One should be mudaf and the other one mudaf ilay. Okay? It is okay. It's not an idafa. And, and why is not an idafa, Imran? Do you have a reason for that? It's a correct answer, very good, but I just want to make sure that you've understood it right as well. Okay? These are two words, la and tumari. Tumari seem to be in jar, so it probably gives me an indication, oh, okay, could be dafa if this is an isam, if la is an isam, if la is an isam. Okay? But if I know la from la ilaha, I know la, la is not an isam, la just means no, correct. La just means no, it's not an ism, it's a harf. It's a harf. It's a word that doesn't make sense when used independently. Okay? Not an ism. It's not an ism. It's a harf. Okay? It's a harf. So because it's a harf, it cannot be isafa. So it's not an idafa, not idafa. Okay? It's not an idafa. Good. So let's go to some other one. What about number 38? Rabbukum. Rabbukum. Idafa or not? Is it an idafa or not? Rabbukum. What do we have here? Don't worry if you if you if you're not sure. You can just give me an answer. Yes, it's an idafa. Correct. It's an idafa fragment because we have two words. We have rabbu and we have kum. Kum is an attached version of antum, isn't it? Antum. Your second person plural. Your. Okay. It is. It is jar. It is plural. It is masculine, and it is. Proper. Okay. So, Rabbu is light, no al, and then followed by jar, therefore it's an idafa. Okay. How about this one? Rafurun Rahimun. Rafurun Rahimun. 41. Is it an idafa? Forty-one. Is it an idafa fragment? Forty-one. Okay, so it's not an dafa because you have 
Rahimun, not as Jaff. Okay? Is, is that, yes, that's one of the reasons, true. But there's another reason why it is not Idafa. Can you tell me the other reason as well? This is correct reason. Yes, Rahimi, Rahimun is not in Jaff. Absolutely correct. What is the formula of Idafa? What is the formula? What is the formula of Idafa? <clears throat> The formula of Hidafa. <clears throat> has to be light, no al, isn't it? It has to be light, no al, correct. So the mudaf has to be light. The mudaf has to be light. Uh, Usman, uh, Usman, it's not jar majroor. It's not jar majroor. So uh, we have not done it, and it's not jar majroor as well. So <clears throat> I want you, I want you both to apply the formula to this, to these two words, Ghufurun Rahim. Take it one by one. Mudaf has to come first, right? So Ghufurun, if it is in Zafa, Ghufurun has to be Mudaf. Ghufurun has to be Mudaf. Now let's apply the formula. Light, no al. So the first requirement is it has to be light. Is this light? Is Ghufurun right? Light. Is Ghufurun light? Starting here, is Ghufurun light? No, it's not light. It's not light. It's not light. So the topic is closed already. The formula does not even begin, right? Forget about Noah and followed by Jer, that comes next. But in the beginning, the, the, the ism you're looking at is not even light. So you, you can just say by looking at Ghafurun, it's not in the Dafa. Sorry, it's not light. Because it's not Jar, therefore it's not an Dafa. Well, you're effectively, you're giving the right answer, but what you're effectively doing, you're going all the way through the formula right at the end, followed by Jar part, and then you're deducing from there. Okay? You first need to verify the first part, light, no al part. Light, no al part. Once you do light noal, then you go and find if it is followed by jar or not. You don't don't directly go and find if it is followed by jar or not, right? Okay. So if if we if we did that, then the previous one that we did, for example, this la tumari, the tumari was already jar, right? Tumari was then already jar. Yeah? So if you pick the light, uh, the second half of the formula, you understand? So your, your thinking process has to be very straight. So it has to be light and it has to be no al. Okay? And then you look for the jar. Good, but the answer is correct. Excellent. All right. Uh, what about this one, 47? Kulli shayin. Kulli shayin. What's so special about this? Kulli shayin. Kulli shayin. The shayin means thing. Thing. Kulli shayin. Is it an idafa? Is it an idafa? And what category of idafa is it? Is it idafa with normalism? Is it idafa with pronoun? Or is it idafa with special mudaf? What category is it? And is it an idafa or not? First thing. <clears throat> so let's look at it pragmatically. Is I'm looking at the first word. These are two words clearly. They're clearly two words. Yes? So I'm looking at kulli. Is kulli light? Yes. Yes, it is light. Okay. Is it fall? Is it? It is having an al? No, it is not having al. Yes. So it's mud. It, it's a mudaf. It's definitely a mudaf. Yes, Imran, you're right. It's an idafa. It's special mudaf. 
it's a mudaf. And is it followed by jar? Yes, it is followed by jar. Okay. Now, now that I've done the first half of the formula, I'm moving on, moving on, and trying to map the second half of the formula. So yes, it is indeed jar. So it is light, no al, followed by jar. So yes, tick box, it's an idafa. Yes. <clears throat> now I want to categorize it. This idafa, <clears throat> what type of it? Is it normal? Is it special mudaf? Or is it with pronoun? I don't see any pronoun here. It could either be normal or with special mudaf. So I go back to my special mudaf table and try to find if I find anything there. There, right? Kulli. Kulli means one of the meaning is every. 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 And shayin, I just told you, means thing. So what would what would you translate this into? What would you translate this into? Everything. Everything. Isn't it? It translates into everything. Is there an off meaning here? No. Why is there no off meaning? Because it's with the special mudaf. So it's going to be special mudaf in the beginning, right? You understand? Excellent. Good. Let's move on to some other one. Uh, let me take... Let me take 49. This is in 49 is interesting. Okay. Forty-nine is interesting. What do you think about forty-nine? What do you think about forty-nine? Is it an idafa? <clears throat> what do you think? In the Rasulihi. In the Rasul Rasulihi. Let's go step by step. Let's go step by step. Now, first tell me how many words do you see here? How many words do you see here? I want to know that. How many words do you see here? In 49. In the Rasulihi. Okay, yes, it's an idafa, correct, light, noel, followed by jar, yes, true. And there are three words, and there are three words, okay? Can you tell me which three words do you see here? The first one is clearly in the, the first one is clearly in the, this is word number one, okay? And then there is rusuli, and there is rusuli, this is word number two. And then there is he, which is the attached pronoun, isn't it? He, which is the attached pronoun. There are three words here, okay? So, now, I want you to think. I want you, I want you to start thinking about in the. In the, is it light? No, al. Is it light? No. Yes, it is light, and it has no al. So, tick box, it is mudaf. Potential mudaf, right? It is mudaf. Let me just just write M M for mudaf, so I don't have to write all the way again and again. So it is mudaf, right? Now, first half of the formula done. Light, no al. And then I go forward. I have to find a jar. Is it followed by jar? Is it followed by jar? The second word says it is by jar because it's Rasulihi. Yes, it's Rasulihi. So there is a jar element to it. There's a jar element here. Look here. This is jar. This is jar. Okay. In the Rasulihi. Correct, Usman. Three words. In the Rasulihi. So the Rasulihi is in jar. So I'm going to say yes, it is Mudaf Ilay. This part. So this part, let me take the black one. The, this part, let me take another color. Let me choose another color, okay? The, the uh, green, purple, green color, okay? Let me just take this one. Green one, okay. So Rasulihi, in the Rasulihi, this part, this part is definitely an idafa. It's a definite idafa. 
Okay? This part is definitely an idafa. You see that? In the Rasulihi. But now the game is not ending here. Now the game is not ending here. Now there is something attached to Rasul. Yes? So I, I, just can't, I just cannot stop here. I need to go forward. I, I know in the Rasulihi is an idafa. And what type of idafa is it? What type of idafa is it? Is it with pronoun? Is it with normalism? Or is it with special mudaf? What is it? Do we know inda from anywhere? Inda belongs to the list of your special mudafs. Right? It's, it belongs to the list of your special mudafs. Okay? And it usually translates to with, beside, by, has, and so on. So if I just take with, so in the Rasuli means with messenger. Yes? This would mean with, with messenger. Okay? So it means with, yes, with messenger. Okay? There's no off meaning here. Yes, correct. It's a special mudaf. But now I've done it. I'm completely sure that this right hand side, this entire right hand side, is an idafa. I'm completely fine with it. Okay? It's an idafa. Right? Because it applies everything on the formula and I've discovered everything. But now I need to start thinking of the Rasuli he part. Rasuli he part. Okay? Rasuli he part rasuli is light as well isn't it the the ism rasuli is light and it also does not have an al it also does not have an al so i can say it is potentially a mudaf as well it is potentially a mudaf as well while it's a mudaf ilay for inda it may be a mudaf at the same time for something else yes you see that? Now to verify the remaining, I know it's light, no, I go forward and say, okay, is there a jar? I found an attached pronoun, and I know Rasuli is an ism. And whenever the attached pronoun is attached to an ism, it is always what? Jar. It is always jar. So I found a mudaf ile here. I found a mudaf ile here. Okay? Mudaf ilay here. So I can say, yeah, okay, cool. That's fantastic because Rasulihi is another idafa. It's in another idafa. It's a chain, okay? It's another idafa. And he is an attached version of which pronoun? Can you tell me he is an attached version of which pronoun? Attached version of which pronoun? He, correct. Hua. It's, a, it's an attached form of Hua. Correct. Absolutely correct. Okay? So, correct. So, Hua is he. So, the attached form would be his or him. Right? His or him. Okay, so in case of Rasulihi, him messenger does not make sense. His messenger would make sense because this is an off relationship. Messenger of his. Yes, messenger of his. So his messenger. So this would translate, this idafa would translate to his messenger. Okay, his messenger. Now you have two idafas going on here. This is two idafas. You like pink? Okay. The two idafas going on here. Okay. So Rasuli is shared between Inda and He. Rasuli at one time is Mudaf Ilay for Inda. Correct, Usman. That's the third person who are. Rasuli is at one time. Mudaf ilayim, it's a mudaf for he. Okay? Attached pronoun. It's shared between the two. 
and there are two udafa idafas happening this is a chain there's no disconnect in it right there's no disconnect so one chain one part says with messenger in the rasuli and the other part says his messenger which is rasuli he now you need to make sense of the english translation you would say this is with his messenger isn't it you would translate it to with his messenger with his messenger overall you're going to say with his messenger that's going to be the full translation of this with his messenger okay do you see this do you see all of this this is so mathematical isn't it this is very very mathematical there's logic behind it it's beautiful language okay there's a chain there's a connection right you see you, you should there are two types of idafas operating here is one with special mudaf and one is pronoun okay So whenever you're finding idafa and your mudaf ilay happens to be light, always think, why is it light? And you know there are four reasons for anything to be light. You remember that? Either it is uh, a categorical negation or it is partially flexible, partly flexible, or it is munaga, calling someone, or the third one is it's a mudaf. It's a mudaf. Then it's a mudaf. So if your mudaf ilay is light always think why it's light because potentially it could be a mudaf good can i have your one if you're fine with this if you understood this what i'm telling you okay can i have a one if you understood this this is uh, big. um usually students like it and it's um, it's very very mathematical. There's nothing illogical about it. Okay? Good, excellent, excellent, excellent. Very good. Let me take you to another one, and I'll let you give me something yourself. Okay. Let's go to number fifty-six. Number fifty-six. Number fifty-six. Okay, number 56. Now, what about number 56? How many words do we have here? How many words do we have here? Any ideas? One of you? How many words are we looking at it? Good, thanks, Aswan. Jazakallah. How many words are we looking at number 56? Correct, three words, there are three words. So let's do the same drill. Uh, that's word number one is wa'adu. This is word number one. Word number two is coming across here, rabbi. Yeah, this is word number two. And ye is the word number three. Okay? Ye is an attached version of ana. Ye is an attached version of ana. Okay? Now, you have to tell me. You have to tell me if it is an idafa. If it's an idafa or not. And if it is, how many idafa? Idafas are all T1 idafa, or you see multiple idafas operating here. And how? What types of those idafas are? Can you tell me? Correct. Three words, Usman. Very good. Wa'adu rab, rabbi. Wa'adu rab and yi, the ya only. Yeah? So what is it? Is it idafa or not? What is the thought process? What is the thought for process? The, the two fragments, the two dafa fragments, correct. The thought process starts from extreme right. 
okay? You start from extreme right here. Start here where the star is. Start here, okay? This is the starting point. Okay, and go that way. Okay, and go that way. So, wa'adu is light. It has no al. So, potentially a mudaf. Rabbi is jar. Rabbi is jar. Correct? So, it's a mudaf ilay. So, it's a mudaf ilay. And wa'adu does not belong to your special mudaf list. And it is also not a pronoun. So it has to be a normal ism. It has to be a normal ism. So it's an idafa with a no. While Rabbi is mudaf ilay, correct, the second fragment is going to be with idafa, idafa with a pronoun, where the first word is Rabbi. And it is mudaf as well because it is light and it has no al. It is mudaf as well. And it is followed by a jar form of an ana pronoun, of an independent pronoun ana. It's jar form of independent pronoun ana, which is mudaf ilay. Okay? So you have two idafas here as well. Rabbi, and then rabbi is shared between e and wa'adu. Okay? Two idafas operating here. So wa'adu means promise. Wa'adu means promise, okay? Can you give me a translation of this statement? Wa'adu rabbi. Can you try to come up with a translation of this statement? You know what is idafa, you know what it does, what relationship it gives you. Can you try to come up with a translation of this? Wa'adu means promise. Don't worry about being wrong, it's fine. You can make mistakes. Correct, perfect. Promise of my master. Exactly. So this is my master, my master. Okay, and this is promise of master. Wa'adu Rabbi is promise of master. So it will translate into promise of my master. Okay, promise of my master. Very good. Excellent. Fantastic. Um, let me give you another one that we will we will move on. And uh, inshallah, where was it? I'm looking for a specific one. Give me a second. I'm just looking for it. I can't find it. Okay, what about number 57? No, oh, sorry, 59, not 57. Now, I'm not saying anything. Yes, this one, excellent. Promise of my master and Rob, exactly. Correct translation as well. So, um, 59, I want you, I want you to tell me what's happening here. Amr means Amr means command. Okay. Command. Amr means command. I want you to give me the translation of this entire statement. But after applying your idafa concepts to it, you I want you to give me the grammatical analysis of this term, of this of this statement. Okay? So take your time. I'll give you a minute notes. Don't rush in typing. Just analyze it. Apply the formula. Apply your thinking. You have to tell me how many words. You have to tell me how many dafas. And you have to tell me uh, the translation of the entire statement. Okay? You have to also tell me the type of idafa it is. Okay? So just take some time. I'll give you a minute or so uh, to think about it. Please do. And once you're done, uh, inshallah, uh, we'll take it from there.
correct, Imran. Three words and two fragments. That's correct. That's correct, Imran. The first fragment is normal mudaf, and the second fragment is with pronoun. It is you mean idafa with pronoun? Okay. Yes, that's correct. The second one is idafa with pronoun. Second one is idafa with pronoun. Correct. So let's try to come up with the meaning of this statement. Correct. Command of his master. Very good. Command of his master. Correct, Usman. Absolutely. Three words. First one is Madaf. The second one is with pronoun. <clears throat> Correct. Absolutely. Great. Excellent. Excellent. You're getting there. Command of his master. Absolutely. Very good. The first Idafa. This is the first Idafa. Okay, and th this one is the second idafa. Okay, this is the second idafa. Okay, two idafas happening here. Okay. It's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's very beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, language. So, inshallah, open up the Quran. I'm just aware. Let's do this exercise now. I just randomly choose a surah. Just, uh, just open any page of the Quran. Open any page of the Quran. Just randomly skim over wherever you end up. And let's see what we've got. Okay? So we came here. Just just skim around. Let's pick up this one, for example. Kullu Amri. I found this. Kullu Amri. Can you, can you tell me what is this? Can you tell me what Kullu Amri is? I just randomly opened the Quran and uh, I don't even know which surah this is right now. I found this Kullu Amri. Okay. Can you tell me if it is an idafa or not? <clears throat> and can you tell me what type of it of idafa it is if it is? Okay. Correct. It's an idafa. Yeah. Kullu Amri. It's an idafa. What type of idafa? It's with special mudaf. Means kullu. Okay? It's a special mudaf. It may not necessarily give you an off meaning. Right? You see that? Things are opening up. So if you go and look at the translation of this, if you go and look at the translation of this, um, it will say every person among them desires that he would be given scriptures spread out. Okay, so this every is coming from kullu, right? Every is coming coming from kullu. Okay, now amri could be anything, desires or deeds or. Right? So any surah, if you open, just randomly open it. Just randomly open it. Go down somewhere. Um, go down and find something. For example, let me just. Let me say Alena, not Alena, sorry, not Alena. Quranahu. Quranahu. What is Quranahu? Quranahu. Do you see something in Quran? Ahu? You just have to start opening up your eyes a little bit when you read the Quran. Just dig for it. Find things in it. 
find things in it. Yes, it's uh, idafa with a pronoun, right? It's idafa with a pronoun. It's an idafa with pronoun. Look at this one. Lisanaka. Lisanaka. Do you see anything here? Is there an attached pronoun here? Okay. Is there an attached pronoun here? Yeah, there's an attached pronoun ka. An attached pronoun is attached to something. And yeah, so and in translation it says your tongue, isn't it? It says your tongue. Or his Quran, yes, in, in the previous example, Usman, correct. Your tongue. Okay? So this is an idafa fragment. Lisana is tongue. Ka is your. Okay? Your. You is the independent pronoun. Anta is independent pronoun that is translated to you. When you make it an attached one, it is your. Okay? Because you need to create an uh, idafa. Tongue of yours, for example. So your tongue, it's an idafa fragment. So you just open up the Quran and you your job should be to make Quran your 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 perfect workbook. Okay. Put some sticky notes on it, put something on it. Okay. Just try to find things in it. Don't just read it normally, just try to find. Let's look at this one. Isma Rabbika. Isma Can you tell me what's happening here? <clears throat> Isma Rabbika. Is Isma light? No, Al? Yes. Isn't it? Uh, I understand, Usman. So, uh, yes. I know, I know you're writing in the right time, but it's reaching me late. I know that. So, yeah, absolutely know that. Thank you. No worries. No worries. So, Isma Rabbika, Isma Rabbika, what is happening here? Can you tell me? You just need to make the Quran your best workbook. You need to buy a lot of sticky notes. Put them here and there. You need to buy colorful pens and markers where you go and come and just write on top of the word so you know it's an idafa. Next time you don't have to analyze, right? So just 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 buy a copy of Quran if you don't want to use the existing one. That is more for your exercise and learning. So you want to learn the Quran, apply this knowledge to the Quran as much as you can. Isma is light. Noal. Rabbi, after it, is in Jar. So Isma is Idafa, and Rab Isma, Isma is Mudaf, and Rabbi is Mudaf Ilay. Okay, that's the first Idafa fragment with a normal Ism. Then Rabbi at the same time is light. And it has no al, and it has an attached pronoun. This is the second idafa, second idafa with a pronoun. Okay, so your master isma is name, so name of master first idafa, rabbika your master. It means name of your master. Okay, if you would look at the translations, if you would look at the translation, exalt the name of your lord. So the name of your Lord, okay? Name of your Lord, okay? Now, I want you to do one thing. I want you to tell me, let me take this here. Let me take this to the to the word. I want you to, um, let's not, let, let's do it like this, okay? So, Ismi, what are the full properties of the word Ismi? Can you tell me? Let's see if you know. Can you tell me the four properties of the word isma? Isma. Four properties of the word isma. This word is what I'm after. Okay, so you close it. Four properties of the word isma. 
status what is the status what is the status of the word isma status number gender type that's what i'm after status number gender type It's nasab correct, it's singular correct, it's masculine correct. Is it common? Are you sure, Imran? Is it common? Yes, it doesn't have an al, it is not. But you know, remember, remember the last tip of finding if something is proper or not? The word before of is proper if the word after of is proper, right? So, how about Rabbi? Yeah, okay. So, Rabbi is Jar. It's singular. It's masculine. And it seems common. Okay, fine. What about Ka? Ka is Jar. It's singular. It's masculine. And it's proper. It's proper. Because Ka is proper, Rabbi becomes proper. Because Rabbi is proper, Isma becomes proper. Okay, so it becomes proper. Keep these things in mind. Okay, keep these things in mind. Your your objective should be to start bringing your entire juice of knowledge that you have when you when you analyze this language. Okay, what you're doing right now is called Arab, the grammatical analysis of Arabic. Okay, so you're trying to analyze the four properties, the relationship between the words. This is the study of Nahu that you're doing, right? So that's what you're doing right now. Um, so keep that in mind. Isma is proper, not common. Okay? It's proper. Rabbi is proper, not common. And all of that because of the ka. Because ka is proper. So, uh, excellent. How much time have we got? We've got a few minutes. Okay, so let's, let's see some more examples. I don't want to start a new topic right now. Um, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to break the flow. Okay? So let me go to some other, some other example. Okay. Let me take another surah. Randomly going there. I'm looking at Nasrullahi. I'm looking at Nasrullahi. You know this surah by heart. You know this surah by heart. Nasrullahi. What is Nasrullahi? Can you tell me anything about Nasrullahi? Nasrullahi. Do you see anything here? Is there anything operating here? It's an idafa fragment. Light no al followed by jar. Nasru means help. Nasru means help. So it would translate to help of Allah. Okay, help of Allah, Nasrullahi. Nasrullahi, help of Allah. Okay, help, assistance, whatever you want to call it. Okay, look at the translation. Uh, what does it say? When the victory of Allah has come. Okay, so it, this translation is incomplete because because well fathu is victory okay the help is nasru okay then the victory and help of allah has come that will be the complete translation okay not help of his allah uh, usman not help of his allah because 
this ha that is confusing you in the end is not an attached pronoun it's a part of this word okay it's not an attached pronoun okay it's this this he is part of the word not every he is an attached pronoun right so there are words that have uh, he as part of them okay it's an idafa fragment correct so there are just two words nasru and allahi okay so the spelling of allah is with the he right with the with the ha in the end so it's not an attached pronoun okay Now let's look at this Bismillah. Let's do let's do some analysis of um, of Bismillah here. So let's do some analysis of Bismillah. So what is happening here? Bismillah in the first two words. Do you see any fragment? You see any fragment operating here? Bismillahi. Yes, Bismillahi is an idafa. There's a bit more to it, which you will learn inshallah soon. There's Bismi in itself is a fragment, but we'll learn that later on. But right now, um, Bismillahi, if you see Bismi as one word, it slides no al followed by jar. It's an idafa fragment, okay? So it's effectively an idafa fragment between Allahi and up to this, up to, up to Ismi, where B is a different parf, but let's do that later on. Right now, Bismi is one word for you. And it's light and it has no al. And it is followed by jar. It's an idafa fragment with the name of Allah. There's an off relationship here. Then you move forward. Then you pick up the word Allah and you find a relationship with Ar Rahmani. Allahi Ar Rahmani. Is there, is there anything happening here? Is there anything happening here? Is there anything happening between Allahi and Ar Rahmani? This is a Mosuf Sifa, correct. It's a Mosuf Sifa relationship. Then you go forward and you pick up Ar Rahimi as well, right? And you pick up Ar Rahimi as well. And you do the four properties of Ar Rahimi. And you would realize that Ar Rahimi is also a Sifa of the word Allah. And remember, we could have one mosuf and we could have multiple sifas. Here, there are two sifas, Ar-Rahmani and Ar-Rahimi, for the word Allah. Okay? You see that? Excellent. Great. Very good, very good. So inshallah, it will open up a lot for you. Um, so I want to just quickly go into the next exercise before we close. Um, and just quickly run through a few examples with you. So you are comfortable with it. So you're comfortable with it, inshallah. So it's the exercise on page number 24. It's an exercise on page number 24. Um, so what you had to do was effectively do the translations and fill in the blanks of what you think it could mean. So uh, half of the meaning is given to you. Okay, half of the meaning is given to you. So the word itself is the word itself is. Let's say number two is baghiyukum. Now this baghiyu refers to this baghiyu refers to this translation that is given to you. Okay, rebellion. This translation. Okay. So what you had to do is to make sense of the pronoun that is over there. 
and try to come up with a statement. So kum, we know, comes from a pronoun anthum, which is you or you all plural, okay? What would you translate that into? It's an idafa fragment here, isn't it? This is all idafa with pronouns. This is all idafa with pronouns. You would say your rebellion, yes? Because this your would then refer to the pronoun here, this one. Okay? Your refers to the pronoun. Correct. Then you have this Zuchrufaha. Now, Zuchrufa is translated as glitter. And ha is what? What is ha? What is ha? Can you give me a translation of this? Ha. What should I fill in the blank here? Her, correct. It's her glitter. It's her glitter. Correct, correct. Okay, let me pick up... Uh, number five. Well, let's say number four. And number five. Let's let's do number four and number. Five. So, Amruna, Amruna. What should I fill in? What should I fill in, Amruna? Amruna. What is na? Look at na. What is it? Yes, it's an attached form of Nahnu. Nahnu is we, so we could say the sense says it's our command. Okay? Our command. Very good, very good. Number five is Qawmahum. Qawmahum. Is this whom attached pronoun or an independent pronoun? Is it a or independent pronoun? It's an attached form, yes. And how do I know it's an attached form? Because it is coming after a word and it is depending on the word. It's part of an idafa fragment. It's part of an idafa fragment. Correct. Correct. So what should I translate that into? Their nation. Their nation. Correct. Their nation. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So this exercise is pretty simple. Uh, I think you can do this. Um, so if you haven't completed it, please do complete it. There's another one after it, which I would like you to also attempt, please. Uh, this exercise is idafa with special mudafs. Okay, this is an important exercise too. It will help you come up with the right translations of idafa with special mudaf. Okay, for example, let's pick up this one. Let's pick up the first one. Bagayril haqqi. Okay, bagayril haqqi. And it is translated as it is translated as the right justification, okay? The right justification. Now, I need to know, I need to know what should I fill in here based on my knowledge of special mudaf. Do I, do I see any special mudaf here? Do I see any special mudaf here? 
in Bahari Hakti. Any special mudaf? So if you look at if you look at the word Bahir, you would find this special mudaf. So if you look at it here, Bahir, so you know you know there is a special mudaf that's called Ghair. Ghair. That is in your notes translated as other than. Okay? Other than. So there are effectively three words here. There's one word which is Ba, there's another one which is Ghair, and there's third one which is Al Haqqi. Okay? So Ghair is a special mudaf. B usually translates to with. Um, we'll see that inshallah in the next class okay and if i have to take all of this and if i have to translate this i could say other than the right justification that's absolutely fine or i could say without the right justification that's all you need to make sense in english okay so whatever you want to write so you can write other than oops you want to write other than or you can say without. So in English, you would have to find the right word to make sense out of it. Okay? So if you sometimes do literal translation, you may not get the correct sense out of it. So you have to find the right word to get the sense out of it. Okay? So, um, so that, that's the exercise that you have to do. Okay? okay? So um, please give it a shot at home, inshallah. Um, and if you have any questions, we will we can discuss them in the class tomorrow. Um, and tomorrow we will inshallah start a new new fragment altogether. Okay. So what we have done so far, we have um, we have done the we have done the idafa. Idafa is complete. Uh, pronoun topic is uh, completed. It will pronoun will come again when we do the fail inshallah uh, later on. Um, so, but I hope that you you got a good grasp of this concept, and we got enough practice today. So, just keep on going. You're doing great, absolutely great, great. Keep your motivation alive. Just just keep on coming. We're going slow, and we we're just making sure we learn things right, not learn things too much, but we learn things right. Let's keep on learning, 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 learning. And inshallah, if you what you have learned so far, if you start to teach to your families at home, whatever you know so far. So if you know a little bit of Arabic today in terms of grammar, just pick up your, your grown-up children or your wife or whoever is around you who's interested and, and start teaching them. And once you teach them, you realize how much you really learn uh, while teaching. Okay? Um, so inshallah, keep on going. Don't give up. I will see you tomorrow, inshallah. Uh, thank you for joining again. So uh, until then, have a nice time. Enjoy the sunny weather. And uh, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.